President Nicolas Maduro Moros arrives in Qatar as part of his international tour of solidarity and collaboration. In Ecuador, the indigenous leader Leonidas Issa, who was arrested after calling for a national strike against President Guillermo Lasso's government, was released early on Wednesday morning. The United Kingdom canceled its first deportation flight to Rwanda after a last-minute intervention by the European Court of Human Rights. From the headquarters of Telesuri English in Havana, Cuba, this is From the South. I'm your anchor, Gladys Quesada, and these are the news. The president of Venezuela, Nicolás Maduro Moros, arrived in Qatar, the fifth country he has visited as part of his tour for the Eurasian region, with the aim of strengthening bilateral relations. The Venezuelan president was received by senior officials of the Qatari government upon his arrival at Doha's international airport. During his stay in that country, the Venezuelan head of state is expected to meet with the Emir of Qatar, Tabin bin Hamad Al Thani. With this visit, Nicolás Maduro bets on strengthening bilateral relations through cooperation and promoting the construction of a multipolar world without hegemonism. The South American president has also visited visited Turkey, Algeria, Iran, and Kuwait in the framework of his tour with a broad cooperation agenda that focuses on the areas of science, technology, agriculture, transportation, energy, tourism, and culture. Now we move on to other topics. Colombian prison workers denounce presidential candidate Rodolfo Hernandez on charges of defamation. The second municipal court of small labor cases of Bogota admitted an action filed by the Union of Prison Workers and the Union of the National Penitentiary and Prison, Prison Institute against the presidential candidate Rodolfo Hernandez for damaging the institution's reputation. On Twitter, the union demanded respect for prison workers while assuring that there are more than 16,000 families who make a living from this profession. This message was accompanied by a video in which Rodolfo Hernandez points out, in a broad generalization, the level of corruption in the National Penitentiary and Prison Institute. Social organizations for the defense of human rights in Colombia presented a report on what they consider to be the failures of Iván Duque's government. According to a document known as Hunger and War, the Legacy of the Apprentice, there was an increase in the number of murders of social leaders during the administration of President Iván Duque from 116 victims in 2016 to 310 in 2020 alone, while so far in 2022 there have been 81 assassinations, massacres and the other hand went from 9 in 2016 to 33 in 2020. The report also revealed that in 2020 the fall of women's employment together with youth employment caused more than 2,150,000 people to fall into poverty. The group highlighted that the current government failed to comply with the goals of the development plan in relation to social issues and with the peace agreements signed in 2016. The Mexican government is getting ready to vaccinate children between the ages of 5 and 11 against COVID-19. The authorities explained that the immunization against coronavirus for this group of children will begin on Thursday. The Undersecretary of Public Health Prevention, Hugo lopez Gatel, informed that the pharmaceutical company Pfizer-BioNTech will provide the country with 8 million doses of anti-COVID-19 vaccines for minors. The official explained that this is the seventh stage of the immunization program designed in the country to contain COVID-19 infections. The government pointed out that the goal is to give the doses to 15 4 million children before December and that the campaign will be carried out by municipalities.
And the World Health Organization Director General Tedros Adhanom Ghebreyesus said on Tuesday we'll meet on June 23rd to determine whether to classify the global monkeypox outbreak as a public health emergency of international concern. The emergency committee will discuss the designation, which is the highest alarm on the UN agency can sound. Before the last few months, monkeypox had been generally confined to Western and Central Africa. To fight the global spread, the WHO aims to recommend tried and tested public health tools, including surveillance, contact tracing, and isolation of infected patients. Tedros said that 1,600 confirmed monkeypox cases and 1,500 suspected cases have have been reported to the WHO this year from 39 countries, 32 of which have been recently hit by the virus. While 72 deaths have been reported in countries where monkeypox has already endemic, none have been seen in the newly affected countries, WHO Director General said. It's now clear that there is um, uh, unusual uh, uh, situation, meaning even the virus is, is, is behaving unusually from how uh, it used to behave in, 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 in the past. Uh, but not only that, it's also affecting more and, and, and more countries. So far this year, more than 1,600 confirmed cases and almost 1,500 suspected cases of monkeypox have been reported to WHO from 39 countries including seven countries where monkeypox has been detected for years and 32 newly affected countries. I think we'll it, take a short now. break now. Join us again after this. Welcome back to From the South. In Ecuador, the indigenous leader Leonidas Isa Salazar, who was arrested after calling for a national strike against President Guillermo Lasso's government, was released early on Wednesday morning. On Tuesday night, Judge Paola Avedon ordered the immediate release of the president of the Confederation of Indigenous Nationalities, CUNAE, and issued alternative measures to preventive detention, such as the prohibition to leave the country and the periodic presentation before the prosecutor's office every Wednesday and Friday. Also, she determined a hearing for July 4th in which the indigenous leader will face the charge of alleged perpetrator of the crime of paralyzing a public service. The arrest of Leonida Sisa, described as a legal by the Confederation of Indigenous Entities and Identities was carried out in the early hours of Tuesday morning by the elite groups of police in the sector El Chasqui in the province of Cotopaxi. Brazilian President Jair Bolsonaro made official on Tuesday the privatization of the state-owned electricity company Eletrobras at the Sao Paulo Stock Exchange. The capitalization made through the issuance of the new shares valued at 42 reals per share raised around 30 billion reals, about $6 billion. The new shares began trading on the Sao Paulo Stock Exchange on Monday and closed up 3.37% on Tuesday. This is the second largest capitalization operation in the world this year and also the second largest of its kind in the history of Brazil after another one carried out by Petrobras in 2010. Outside the Stock Exchange, citizens warns that the electricity bill will rise 20% with the sale of the Brazilian company. One two thirds of the state com owned companies have been sold with Bolsonaro. And the Regional Indigenous Council of Cauca ratified support to Ecuadorian people after the arrest of the Confederation of Indigenous Nationalities President Leonida Sisa. Send greetings to the brothers and sisters of the Canaye in Ecuador and demand the government of Ecuador, the government of Lasso, to guarantee the expressions, guarantee the expressions in the framework of the Constitution of Ecuador to these peoples. Tell them that we accompany the native peoples of Ecuador from Colombia and that we will be very attentive to their demands. 
Cuba's president, Miguel Diaz Canel, said on Tuesday he's certain that the island will overcome the difficult economic situation it is going through due to the world crisis. The statement was made during an exchange with the highest government authorities of all the provinces of the country and the special municipality of Isla de la Juventud. The Cuban head of state spoke specifically about inflation, spoke specifically about inflation shortages, production problems and difficulties with the delay of shipping companies in the transportation of contracted and paid goods. The Escanel said that in addition to the results of the pandemic, Cuba has a particular electro-energetic situation and the consequences of the intense rains of the past weeks, which he said bore, past weeks, which he said bore beneficial for certain crops and for the water reservoirs, but have caused damages to Now we move on to other topics. Authorities in El Salvador report at least six dead due to rains and floods caused by a tropical wave. Local authorities said the rains and floods also damaged 19 houses, knocked down 10 trees, caused rivers, 10 trees, caused rivers to overflow and landslides that affected several communication routes in the country. The authorities the warned that the rain will continue throughout the week. They also call on the population living in high-risk areas to comply with the instructions of the law enforcement, with the instructions of the law enforcement or go to the shelters set up by those and for those affected. What do we need for this to be, what do we need for this to be finally successful? We have to abide by the recommendations. We should not expose ourselves to danger. They will have shelters with everything needed so that they can have their space to rest, their space for protection, to avoid risk in areas where there might be serious events. And we have more news coming up after a final short break, so stay with us. Flores de Maduro. Esta es la segunda visita oficial que realiza el presidente Nicolás Maduro Moros al estado de Qatar. La primera fue realizada en el año 2000. La visita fue en 2015, cuando el presidente Nicolás Maduro tuvo que estabilizar los precios de Esta vez he arrived en Qatar para revisar acuerdos con qatarí oficiales. Venezuela mantiene relaciones diplomáticas. Both countries have held uh, diplomatic relations 49 years ago. At this time, um, Qatar officials are going to make an official uh, welcome to President Maduro.
Bien, aquí vamos de apreciar este acto solemne, un recibimiento histórico. El And we were watching these images of the arrival of President Nicolás Maduro Moros to Qatar as he was received by the Emir Sheikh Tamik bin Ahmad Al Tanis, who also is upholding this upcoming, this welcoming ceremony at the official and the highest level. We were listening to both national anthems, the one of Venezuela and the one from the state of Qatar. As we know, this visit is part of the president of Venezuela's international tour by the region and also trying to bolster and trying to enhance these bilateral relations with allied countries, mostly founding countries of the OPEC plus uh, organization, these exporting oil countries and producing oil countries that are trying to bolster their relationships in the context of the international situation with the energy sector, the energy markets, and also several um, multipolar issues, geopolitical issues in this case, facing the U.S. sanctions, the U.S. pressure, and the conflict between Russia and Ukraine. The president of Venezuela, Nicolás Maduro Moros, also is trying to enhance bilateral relations in several fields, as we know and as he has declared in this, the field of oil production, technology, also finance, investment, economy, agriculture, a very important sector for both countries, and also the culture and education. In the trade and financial systems, Venezuela is trying to get a better place, get a better position, and she needs, the country needs, in this case, um, needs um, to bolster and to enhance itself and to get support from allied countries. Also, as we know, in agriculture, uh, Venezuela is producing. Now we return to our broadcasting and we have more information. The United Kingdom canceled its first deportation flight to Rwanda after a last minute intervention by the European Court of Human Rights rights, which decided there was a real risk of irreversible harm to the asylum seekers involved. The flight had been scheduled to leave Tuesday evening local time, but lawyers for the asylum seekers launched a, fl a flurry of case-by-case -case appeals, seeking to block the deportation of everyone of the government's list. Foreign Secretary Liz Truss has said earlier in the day that the plane will take off no matter how how many people were on board, but after the appeals, no one remained. Activists have denounced the policy as an attack on the rights of refugees that most countries have recognized since the end of World War II. Now we move on to other topics. Russia's Gazprom enterprise announced on Tuesday that they will be reducing by 40% the volume of gas supplied to Europe through the Nord Stream pipeline. According to the Russian energy company, the measure is due to the fact that the German company Siemens has not yet returned the technical equipment used to pump the gas, which was under repair. This led to a reduction in the number of pumps, which affected the volume of gas. Meanwhile, the company detailed that at the moment it will not be only possible to guarantee a level of gas supplies through the Nord Stream pipeline of up to 100 million cubic meters per day of the 167 million cubic meters planned. The measure comes amid a drop in Russian gas exports to Europe due to the sanctions taken against Russia since the beginning of the special operation in Ukraine. And the Russian Baltic Sea Fleet reported on the implementation of air defense exercises to detect unidentified targets and repel simulated attacks against enemy aircraft. According to the fleet's press service, more than 40 aircraft and helicopters, as well as in about 2,000 units of weapons and military equipment, are also involved in the exercises which are part of the troops training plan of 2022. The objectives are to increase the level of readiness and capability of the fleet's military management units. They also seek to improve the interaction, maritime and field training of ship crews and coastal troop staff. South Korea's unionized truckers and the Transport Ministry reached an agreement on minimum pay guarantees, ending a nationwide strike that caused nationwide logistic disruptions and delays. 
Members of the cargo trucker Solidarity, under the win of the Korean Confederation of Trade Unions, reached the agreements with the Transport Ministry and decided to end the strike that began on June 7th and return to work. The union has been demanding an extension of the safe trucking, the freight rates system designed to prevent dangerous driving and guarantee minimum freight rates for truck drivers. The system was introduced for a three-year run in 2020 and scheduled to end December 31st, but the two sides reportedly agreed to keep the system in place. The latest round of talks were held at a major industrial transport hub near the capital. So we have come to the end of this news brief. But remember, you can find this and many other stories on our website at telesurienglish.net. And also, if you feel so inclined, please join us on social media for all the latest news. We are on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and Telegram. For Telesur English, I'm your anchor, Gladys Quesada. Thank you for watching.